What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are filming in historic 18th and Vine Jazz District at the Lincoln Building, home of Cascade Media Group. Today's special guest is our author. He's also a local Kansas Cityan, uh, being born and raised in Kansas City, Kansas. We are happy that we could finally get him on the program to talk to us a little bit about what he's currently doing. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Mr. Steve Penn to the program. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Mr. Penn, how are you doing? I'm doing great, doing great. What's been going on? What have you been working on recently? Well, I've been uh, just working on my book, uh, publishing my book. Uh, my book is Case for a Pardon, the Pete O'Neill story. Hmm. And uh, it's doing quite well. Mm -hmm. It's doing quite well. Now, who exactly is Mr. Pete O'Neill? Pete O'Neill was the leader of the Kansas City chapter of the Black Panthers. He emerged roughly in, after the riots of 1968 to become the chairman of the Black Panther Party. Um, he led the Panthers for about a year and a half before he was uh, convicted of a crime, uh, taking a weapon from one state to the other. Uh, he was... Uh, given four years in the federal penitentiary, out on bond, he slipped into a trunk of a car that took him to St. Louis, hmm. and he eventually uh, ended up in, in Tanzania in East Africa. Now he's been in Tanzania for 44 years. So he's been in exile in Tanzania for 44 years, un, not, not allowed to come back to the United States. If he came back to the United States, he'd be arrested and taken into custody and would have to serve his four years in federal penitentiary. Now, a lot of people feel that uh, Mr. O'Neill is a person who should be exonerated and he should be allowed to come back into uh, Kansas City, which was once his hometown. That's one side of the issue. Was Mr. O'Neill's name one you heard uh, regularly when you were growing up? Yes, uh, and as I was a reporter, for the star, it was the most fascinating story that I ever came in contact with. And so um, after my uh, work at the star, it was, this is just one story that I decided to embellish and, and work on and publish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where are activists right now with their uh, quest, with their, uh, or how would you say it? with their, their ordeal to get Mr. O'Neill back? Well, um, their quest. I, well, my uh, partner in my project is Alvin Sykes. Uh, everybody knows Alvin. And mm -hmm. Alvin is working on the legal component of Pete's case. Uh, he is trying to contact officials in the federal government that might be willing to exonerate Mr. O'Neill and allow him to come back. United States. So that's what Mr. Sykes is working on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how do you respond to critics who claim that uh, this is no longer his hometown, uh, Mr. O'Neill uh, is best where he is, and uh, we should really probably just let it go? Well, that's, that's a few people's opinion, um, but I truly believe that uh, Pete O'Neill really did nothing wrong and should be allowed to come back to Kansas City. Um, he's paid his price uh, in full. Uh, Pete's debt to society is, as I see it, is paid in full. Um, he, we deserve him some change, in fact. Um, Pete has been in exile now for 44 years. Uh, he has paid his price for this particular crime that I contend he didn't really even commit. And knowing and understanding that it was done under COINTELPRO, mm -hmm. which was the federal government's goal to put him out of business. Uh, and it worked uh, that knowing that um, and that it was done under J. Edgar Hoover, uh, that Mr. O'Neill should be allowed. Those arguments sort of wane when you consider uh, how much he's done, how much he's accomplished, and the overwhelming desire to let him come back to Kansas City. Now, a movie was released when I, about 20 years ago when I was in high school, mm -hmm. uh, Panther, and there have been documentaries that have explored the FBI's attempt to disband uh, not only Black Panthers organizations, but other civil rights organizations 
under uh, President Lyndon Johnson, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, specifically planted individuals uh, to disrupt the activities that were going on. What, for some of us who are a little too young to actually have lived that firsthand, what were the Black Panthers synonymous with uh, here in Kansas City? What did they stand for at that time? Good question. Um, the Black Panthers uh, are synonymous with starting a breakfast program uh, which fed hundreds of children a day. Uh, that's what they're, they're accused of doing, is, is feeding uh, children. Uh, that's the kind of programs that they were working on. And um, uh, Pete was, was, was very much involved in the center of this. Um, whatever uh, situations in town uh, where people were discriminating against African Americans, whether it was uh, after an arrest, or um, whether it was uh, African Amer whether it was a church in the black community that wouldn't allow African Americans to become members, whether it was a beauty pageant that was exploiting uh, African American women and abusing them, Pete took a stand and 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 actually tried to effectuate some change. And, and I truly admire uh, Pete O'Neill. I think he's a local hero mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and should be honored as such. Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, my book is uh, entitled Case for a Pardon, The Pete O'Neill Story. Uh, it just, uh, just details Pete's entire life from his uh, activism as, an Africa, as a Black Panther all the way up to his exile. I don't know if you know, but Pete has gone on to adopt 23 children, Tanzanian children of his own. I got one, and my hands are full. Imagine 23 colds, 23 headaches, 23 nosebleeds. Multiply those, that times 23. That's, that's the work that Pete O'Neill is doing every day. He raises these children as his own. He provides them education, clothing, and health care, um, and he's just doing some amazing things. Uh, hopefully he hopes to get a couple of doctors, lawyers out of that bunch of children. So Pete is just doing some amazing things. And also he has a community center called UAACC, which operates on his property and every day young people from around his community come to his village and learn and are educated in his village. Uh, it's just an amazing sight. He also has um, running water at the back end of his property for anyone around, anybody within his vicinity. They can come up, use their jugs, and get fresh running water to use for their clothes, uh, for their bathrooms, or whatever. Peace has done some amazing work in his community. Have you seen him? Yes, I actually went over and visited him for about a month in 2012. Sat down, uh, talked talked about what I was working on, um, and he helped me. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing to see uh, his environment. He's built a three and a half acre compound that's surrounded by a fence that keeps him him free from the wild animals, and he he just um, works every day to provide for his village. Has he evolved with the, uh, the, the onset of social media? Yes, Pete is online. He has email. He is Facebook. He is uh, uh, really, really wow. involved in, 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 in how he can get around his email and his, his Facebook. He is, he's wonderful with social media. Now, Mr. Penn, out of all the stories that you've worked on, what which story have you been most proud of? This is it. This is the one I'm most really? proud of. Yes, of all of the stories. Now, there is some competition in that. Uh, I, I, I am also partial to uh, the Precious Doe story. Um, uh -huh. When I was a reporter, a uh, columnist at the Star, um, working through an activist, I was able to help solve the case. And that's one of the things I am most proud of is, is actually helping to solve a murder which went unsolved for five years in Kansas City. So Now the book is called? Case for a Pardon, the Pete O'Neill Story. Uh, I have a website. It's www.caseforapardon, 
the pedo, uh, case for pardon, uh, dot com, case for pardon dot com. You can go online, uh, case for pardon dot com. I have a website. It has all kind of information on it about Pete. It has a petition there as well that, that the public is welcome to sign. Mr. Penn, anything else you would like to tell us today? No. Uh, appreciate people going online, www.caseforapardon.com. Uh, learn about Pete. Learn about his story and advocate Pete coming back to Kansas City. The book is Case for a Pardon. Its author, Mr. Steve Penn, is a former Kansas City columnist. He now writes books. We are glad that you shared with us today. We hope that you will come back and talk to us when you have some more to share. Glad, glad, glad to be here and, glad, and, and definitely will be glad to return. Awesome. My name is Glenn Bryan Frizzell. This is What's Up Kansas City. Remember, shoot high, aim for the moon. If you missed, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care. Until next time, check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. If you find yourself in need of a criminal defense, personal injury, or immigration lawyer, then call the service law offices of Kansas City. You'll get the experience of an attorney who understands your need for aggressive representation. Consultations are free, so call today. Sooner or later, you'll need service.